In this block, we focus on points. As we will see, points are one way of representing geographic phenomena that can also be conceptualized in very different ways than those that we've used before. And in doing so, they unpack a whole new way of spatial analytics. In this blog, we will look at why points can be different, but also how they can be in some ways similar to other geographic entities and features we've seen in the past in this course, like polygons. And then we'll delve into some methods that will allow us to visualize and analyze the spatial distributions of points. Let's first delve into what makes points space special. To start the discussion on points, it's best to start with the bits that we already know. And this is when we understand points as polygons. And in this context, points represent fixed entities, which is to say we are representing a segment of the world or a set of uh, objects of the world, but we're considering them as fixed entities. We're, in other words, worth considering or we're assuming their location to be fixed and given. And in this case, when we do this, points are qualitatively very similar to polygons. And more importantly, everything we've learned in this course about dealing with pol polygons can be applied directly to points. For example, we could use uh, spatial autocorrelation techniques such as uh, Moran's eye or local indicators of spatial association to look at a point data set that we've been given only and always as long as we understand points as fixed entities whose location is given. Because when we take this approach, the location is fixed and what we're trying to uh, model is some attribute that is attached to this point. A couple of examples of this uh, point of view is when we look at cities, for example, or buildings. Buildings can be represented as uh, footprints, building footprints, and in that case they would be polygons, but they can also be summarized into a single pair of coordinates. And in those cases, poly well, in, in a more general case of these would be when we represent polygons by their centroid. So rather than spending the extra data and memory required to draw the entire polygon, we just take the centroid. These are cases where we're typically simplifying how we represent a, a geographic entity. But importantly, these are also cases where we're using points as a summary and as a fixed location of another entity. And in these cases, as I was saying, everything we've learned before about uh, analyzing polygons can be redeployed and repurposed for point data sets. Now, the interesting thing with points is that they can also represent a very different set of phenomena. And this is what I term here when points are not polygons. In this case, point data is not only a different geometry, than say polygons or lines, it's a representation of events. And in, when we look at this in this way, they are fundamentally different geographic features and geographic entities. Let's see why. The key concept here and the important aspect that makes points potentially very different from the geographic entities we've used before in this course is that rather than exhausting the entire space, points represent events that could happen anywhere but only happen in certain locations, are only observed in certain locations. And this is a subtle but a very important mental switch, going from a fixed location where something is allocated to a space and could only happen in that space, and in that case is very similar to polygons, to the representation of an event that could happen in a variety of places, but it's only being observed in certain locations of the geography or of our map. Why is this important? Because when we look at points in the, through this lens, the location of the event is part of the process we want to understand. 
is not a given that we take from the start and then we use to analyze something else, is one of the core goals of our analysis, is understanding why these processes, these events that happen, they could happen in many places, but only happen where our points are recorded, are happening there. And when you take a collective look at that, why do we observe the pattern and the distribution of points that we observe? And when we look at points through this lens, one of the main interests becomes characterizing this pattern. In other words, describing formally how points are distributed over space. Because when we're considering points as the location of events that could happen in many places but only happen in some, where those points are located tells us a lot about the process that we're trying to understand. And this is a subtle but very important departure from understanding points as fixed entities whose location is given and is not part of the analysis. A couple of examples of this understanding of points or of cases where we use points to represent events rather than fixed entities. Crime is a, here we have a, a crime map of the Los Angeles region and crime is one of the classic examples for which point pattern analysis, as we'll see in a second, is, um, is very useful. Another classic one is the analysis of species distribution, as in this case we have a map of every single tree in New York. The case of New York is probably slightly different, but when you're thinking of environmental systems, why we find trees in certain locations and non not in others is a key element of understanding why well, what type of trees can grow in different types of landscapes, etc. And then finally, a more recent one. This is a map of tweets, in, in this case of in the region of Liverpool. But a lot of social media data is encoded best and is best understood as points that represent events. In the case of tweets, for example, the event is the posting with a geotag of a tweet. But in the case of uh, check-ins or Facebook likes that are georeferenced. Um, these can all be seen and categorized as events that could happen in a variety of places, but are only observed in certain parts of the map, in certain parts of the geography. This gives rise to this term of point patterns, a, a collection of points that is understood as a series of events that happen only in certain locations. And Point patterns studies the distribution of points over a portion of space. The key assumption here is that a point can happen anywhere in the geography that we're studying, but actually in reality only happens in, or it's only observed in certain locations. And point patterns or collections of these types of points can be of usually are classified at least in two different um, types. One is unmarked point patterns, and this is what we're going to spend uh, most of our time in this block, where we only record locations, or marked point patterns, where we record the location of the event, but also we attach certain characteristics. And point pattern analysis is a wide field, there's a wide subfield of spatial statistics. Uh, it's about describing, characterizing, and explaining point patterns or distributions of points when they're understood as events. And usually the focus is on this idea of the generating process. We're trying to describe and understand the pattern of a collection of points, usually because at the end of the day we're interested in uncovering and better understanding what's the process that generates these, these patterns. In the crime example, we're interested in describing the location and the pattern of different crimes, mostly because we're interested in understanding what is driving that pattern. What are the, what are the mechanisms that determine the location of crimes? Usually, for example, in the case of police departments, because they want to act on that process in certain ways, maybe deploying uh, police units in different uh, ways, or maybe reallocating uh, the resources. But going back to point pattern analysis, usually the field is, the, this, is 
is split into three main uh, field, or three main areas. One is visual exploration, which is about how can we most effectively visualize points, and this falls within the bigger umbrella of geovisualization we saw earlier in the course. The second one is understanding in an exploratory way clustering properties and the identification of clusters, and this mirrors in several ways or falls also under, can fall under the umbrella of exploratory data analysis, exploratory spatial data analysis, or ESDA, as we saw in, in a previous block. And then the final uh, stage in the process of analyzing point patterns relates to statistical modeling of the underlying processes. And this is when we're trying to uncover what are the main determinants that generate the point patterns that we observe. In underline, we have the two areas that we're going to focus in this block with a bit more detail.